what's poppin' y'all, welcome back to another YouTube video, and today we're taking a look at another film review, today we're taking a look at Terrifier 2, we took a look at Terrifier 1 yesterday, so if you did miss that video, definitely go check that out, it's on my channel right now, I took a look at it yesterday, and the reason that I'm taking a look at this in February is because I bought Paramount Plus in February, and I bought it for Halo, and for Knuckles, and unfortunately, I want to get my money's worth, so I'm watching as much content on Paramount Plus as I can right now, so that includes a lot of horror movies, so do be expecting a lot of horror movie reviews. I know it's not October, but you can be spooked all year round. It doesn't have to be October to be spooky season or spooky month. So we're here with another horror movie, and let me tell you, this one is miles better than the first one. I watched them back to back, and this one is so much fucking better than the first one. But without further ado, we do have to check in with Google to see what they have to say about this movie. So, Terrifier 2. Resurrected by a sinister entity, Art the Clown returns to Miss Courtney, to Miles Courtney, to terrorize a teenage girl and her younger brother on Halloween night. You know what? That's fair enough. And this actually gives you a lot more information than the movie itself. So, the movie starts with Art the Clown waking up out of the body bag which he was in in the last movie where the last movie ended and he's actually killing the doctor he manages to kill the doctor and he leaves the hospital and sees a load of police cars go past we then skip one or nine years the movie can't make up its mind on the news channel it says nine years ago however each other character says it was one year ago that this dude was killed so i'm not too sure i'm not honestly sure what year this takes place, or how far after the original this was, but there is some form of time skip. We then go to a girl making her Halloween costume of this barbarian angel character, and her brother who is making a character costume of Art the Clown, who obviously killed nine people, and the mother doesn't agree, the sister doesn't agree, but he, he wants to do it anyway. He then walks over to his sister asking for super glue to fix his hat, and then he starts questioning about Art the Clown, saying, Hey, you know you love Dad's art, I love Dad's art too, and we're both dressing up as some of his artwork, but do you think this guy will ever come back? Do you still think he's out there? Because his body was never found. This little kid is doing so much research on horror movies, killers, serial killers, and I think the mother should definitely check him and maybe put a stop to that, because that's fucking creepy and weird, and the kid should not be able to look and find all this information about serial killers readily available to him online. He's like 15, no, no he's like four, 13, 14, he should not be looking at this shit. And we then have Art the Clown going to what looks to be a dry cleaners, and he sees a little girl version of Art the Clown, and he plays patty cake with him, and the little girl can't be seen by the other people in the washroom, and... He ends up killing the other people in the washroom with, like, plungers and brooms. We don't see it, but he does. We see their dead bodies. We then have the kid going to school the next day and seeing Art the Clown playing with a dead possum in the school hallway. And he threw it at him. The kid then gets expelled for obviously bringing a dead animal into school and destroying the hallway, which he didn't do, but his mum doesn't believe him. We then have the girl who had a nightmare about Art the Clown the night prior, and had her room set alight on fire, and she had to go to Cosmic Halloween to buy some new wings. And Art the Clown was there, gave her a bag back, started tormenting her, and then killed the store owner. Then he goes over to her best friend's house, and he kills her best friend in the most awful way possible, stabbing her, cutting her back, pulling at her back, pulling at her face, cutting her eye in half. And, yeah, he was eating her flesh, and by the time her mother got home, I don't know how she was still alive, but, yeah, he killed the mother as well, basically emptied her skull, and put sweets inside, and gave it to children, because this is, again, Halloween night, so children were knocking on the door. The children just accepted it, and didn't say a word about the head. We then continue to the party which the girl was going to. She dresses up as this half-naked barbarian lady, and we then get her other best friend, because they're in like a group of three. She puts a little bit of drugs in her whiskey, a little bit of drugs in her shot to get her high, 
and to try and calm her down because she is mentally ill, so, you know, drug her, make her happy. I don't know why that would work, but she tried it. And she then starts, like, you know, getting all high, acting all high, stereotypically high. And then she gets upset. She sees this crazy little girl, which, you know, was set up that no one else could see but Art. But now everyone else can see her. And no one else can see her but her and her little brother, which is weird. And I don't know how it really works. Who can see her and who can't? The rules are definitely not set up in this world to have anyone really know what's happening. I will be honest, the rules are very obscure because Art manages to travel between dreams like Freddy Krueger by going into this girl's dream, which also ends up reality when she ends up in the amusement park at the end. And then we also have her father, which they tried to set up a lot of lore and story with that character, by saying he had visions, he ended up killing himself, and he had visions of Art and all the murders that Art committed. And it is really weird how they tried to sort of go into this lore-heavy um, story compared to the first movie, which was just a hack slash let's kill as many people as possible. I know there's a lot of speculation that Hollywood didn't want to pick this up because of how gory it was, and that's why people like it. And I'm going to be honest, the story in the second one is far better than the first one. It's not good, but it's still a lot better than the first one. And the characters, they try and make you care about the characters a lot more, try and get you invested in them, and get you to care about their lives, their friendships, their family, and it tries to get you to respect their family dynamic as well, which, to be fair, I kind of don't. These characters were not sort of connectable at all. I didn't feel myself connecting with any of these characters. Was I rooting for Art the Clown for this movie? No. Was I rooting for the heroes? No. Did I think the heroes would win? No. The heroes didn't win in the other movie, so did I expect them to win here? No. I kind of expected them to all die in the most gruesome way possible, and I, my expectations were turned. They actually won. They got to the end. They managed to survive and live another day, and I'm going to be honest, I, I didn't expect it, but it's another film that I watched that I probably won't watch again. Am I glad I watched it? Yeah, I guess. Uh, it, it was okay. It was very interesting to see all the prosthetic makeup that they used on all this blood and gore and rip, ripping faces off, ripping legs in half, ripping arms off, ripping the backs open. And there was a lot less nudity in this one, which I'm thankful for because I feel like nudity in horror movies is way overused and way over the top. Nudity in movies as a whole is just way overused and way over the top. I feel like you should only use nudity if it, like, progresses the story in any way, instead of just for, like, a cheap sort of, hey, look, naked lady, get watch time, watch our movie. And this is definitely a 5 out of 10. I think it's, like, one better than the last one. I think I gave the last one, like, 4 out of 10. So this is a 5 out of 10, literally just one point better. And, um... Will I watch number three? Probably. So when number three drops, I will be watching it. And it seems to be taking place at Christmas, which isn't actually that long after this. It's like two two months away after this movie, or when it, this movie's set. Because this movie's set at Halloween, so it's literally just two months away. So other than that, there isn't much else to talk about with this film. I don't have much else to say. The character designs are pretty interesting, I guess. I liked the cosplay art to it. Again, but it is Halloween. But again, I liked cosplay, so, you know, it sort of resonated a little bit with me there. But that was as much as I got with connecting with any of the characters. And do I care for Art the Clown? Do I like Art the Clown? Do I think he's going to be the next big horror movie villain? The next big horror franchise? No, no, and no. A lot of people do like him, but I feel like it's still a very indie movie, which isn't as popular and not many people have seen. Because... My mum watched this, she recommended it to me, and I had no idea what the fuck it was. I didn't know what this thing was. I was like, what the fuck is Terrifier? It's, like, not a well-known name. It's not as popular enough to be a well-known name. I don't think this was in the cinema, but I do believe number three is going to be in the cinema. So, hey, I'm probably not going to pay for number three. I'll probably wait for it to come on Paramount Plus, like the other two. But I have nothing else to say, so it's time for shameless self-promotion. 
If you do want to help support me as a content creator, you can press the link in the description to check out all the other stuff that I have to offer as a content creator, from my TikTok, to my Instagram, to my Twitch, to my Cameo, to my everything else that I have to offer that's on there. And then you can also go and check out the subscribe button, which is also down below. It really does help me out, and if you do want to be notified for when I do upload, if you are a fan of these videos, do press the bell as well. And you'll be notified every time I upload. I do have a pretty regular upload schedule at 1am here in the UK. I upload my daily videos. And then as the news comes throughout the day, that's when I post that. So you get news drip fed to you throughout the day. And then you also get your scheduled uploads at 1am. Ready for the new day. Ready for when you wake up. Or ready for when you go to sleep. So other than that, I hope you all enjoyed this YouTube video. See you all next one. Have a nice day. And goodbye. Stay home and stay safe. I don't want to watch another one of these. They were so shit.